Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sabine. Today we have a really fun project for you. I have been on the lookout for fabric to make star sign again. This was one of our Stash and with Stephanie patterns that we released a couple of years ago. We had this celestial themed fabric. It was fantastic and it sold out like immediately, twice. It was so crazy and you guys loved it. And I have been looking out for two years for fabric that would be perfect for this quilt and I finally found it. Dear Stella came out with a new line that is all celestial and this time instead of in a shades of gray, we're gonna do it in shades of blue and you're gonna get enough fabric so that you have enough extra to be able to create the fade as you're going out with the log cabins. I've done a digital version of the quilt so you can get an idea of what it's gonna look like and it is stunningly fabulous. I'm so excited about it. So I'm gonna show you guys the fabric and then we're gonna replay the tutorial for you. I, I really like this one. This is not like the most, um, like you kind of have to think a little bit when you're cutting everything out because you're gonna have three different size stars that are this, um, the focal point of your block. And then going out from there, you have different amounts of log cabin strips depending on what size you're starting with with your star. And you're gonna be going out from the darkest fabric surrounding that star to the lightest fabric as we work out. It brings this really cool effect and I think it looks like the night sky. So we're gonna take a look at the fabric here that we've used to make this happen and then we're gonna go into that tutorial. We're gonna start off with our star fabric. It's this really pretty like blue sash. It's super light blue. So especially when we pair it next to the really dark fabrics, it just pops as white. It's really gorgeous. We also have this really pretty swirly um, dash that is just kind of going all over. It really looks like the night sky uh, just swirling around and that's gonna be our binding. So this is really a great way to set everything off. Now this is that same little hashed curves that we are using for the star, but this is what we're actually gonna be used to rounding the star because this one is like a very deep midnight and I really like this and we've arranged it also for you from lightest to darkest in the same order that I use when I did the digital quilt. So that way there's no guesswork for you guys when you're trying to figure out how I made it work so that way you can repeat it at home. So here we have some shooting stars. It's really pretty. It's got a little bit of lighter in it, but it is mainly reads as a very deep midnight blue. So what we did to fill this out, because there weren't quite enough of just the plain star prints, is Dear Stella has some great basics. I'm always telling you guys that you need to have a good basic selection in your stash because sometimes you might find a collection like this one that's perfect to do a quilt with, but it is not quite enough to meet the minimum pattern requirements. So then you can find what's called basics like this. This is great, it's, it fits with the color and it fits with the theme because the way it's swirling all around, it just looks like the night sky. So it's nice because it's just a little bit lighter than what we went here so we can start to do that fade. In this one, we actually see constellations. We have the, the Pegasus going there. We have what looks like Saturn, some stars, some shooting stars and comets. Really very cute. Here we have some mythical astrological creatures and the winged horses and also it looks like maybe some harpies. They're really pretty and the colors and the imagery are just gorgeous with this. This one takes on those imagery of the leaves again and they again just have that swirling feature. So even though those swirling basics are not technically part of the collection, the imagery in here absolutely works with it and it looks like it all belongs together. This is another one of those basic blenders that's the right color and helps us fill out where the collection isn't quite large enough. This one is called Moonscape, so it's absolutely perfect for our star themed quilt. You can see here that we're starting to get a little bit lighter. This is where the fade starts to become more evident as we go to those almost white prints at the end. All right, we're now getting into those medium blues. This one is very slate blue and it's starting to, to really have the really cool effect of that fade. I think that's what everybody really loved about the original and I think we've replicated that really well with this version of it. We saw this one before in a much darker colorway. So here it is in that more medium value. All right, we've got a couple more moonscapes here and they're looking really fun. 
Here's another moonscape. We're getting a little brighter with the colors. This one, we just had the Pegasus and their wings flying. It's really pretty, especially as we start to get lighter on those colors. We've got another really pretty light blue as we continue that fade. So I think we actually have a griffin here, which I only know about because of My Little Pony, the movie, and which is also why I know that this is a Pegasus because my child was at one point completely obsessed with all things unicorns and rainbows. But this is my, one of my favorite prints in the line and it looks so cool in the actual quilt. And we are gonna wrap it up with a really light white with those blue flowers just spreading around there. It is so fun and this is just a fantastic collection and a great way to use this fabric. You can just see this really cool fade going from light to dark where we're gonna have our darkest ones against this nice light white and it is just gonna make it shine like a star and it'll be absolutely fantastic. Now when you get your pattern, you're gonna see that we've sent you more fabric than is in the pattern. The pattern is for if you're going to cut things economically, that is exactly the amount that you need to do it. If you are going to cut things where you want to do the fade, then you're going to need additional fabric, which is why we're sending you additional fabric because there is gonna be some waste um, involved when you do that. What I did was I cut my darkest ones first and I used as much as I could to surround the stars with my darkest prints always. Obviously the three darkest are gonna be for the outside of your stars, for the background of that, and then you're just going to work on out. So I cut all my strips and then I just started from the darkest and I would cut as needed to go around those stars and I planned it out completely before I sewed a single thing. So it does take some additional planning um, and if that's something that's overwhelming to you, you can just have it go together any which way with the log cabin and that's fine. But if you really love the star print and you really love that fade so that it kind of looks like the night sky going across, that's how I did it. So it's super fun. I love the way that this turned out and I love the way that it looks in this new collection from Dear Stella. So let's get on with the tutorial. And we've got a bunch of these kits available for you over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. The pattern star sign is available separately because if you are a Stash with Stephanie member, you get that for free. And if you are not, it's 12 bucks, but some people may have already gotten it when we originally released it a couple years ago. So if you already have it and you missed out on the kit, now's the time to come grab this. All right, let's watch that tutorial. So to make four at a time flying geese, we're gonna start off with one large square and four small ones. And they're gonna be different sizes because we have three different size stars are gonna be in this quilt. So make sure you're referring to your pattern instructions to know what goes with what. But what we're gonna start off doing is just drawing a line on the wrong side of our squares, the little ones. We're still making some adjustments to those new studio lights now that we're in here. So I'm gonna draw this line really dark so you guys can see it at home. We've got a line going from corner to corner. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're really angling that pen in when it's touching that line. That will make sure that you are really right in the middle and when we're sewing we're going to sew straight up and down that and that will make sure that we don't end up with some wonky size flying geese. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on its side like this and you're going to arrange it and what I usually do is I just arrange this top one and bring it over to my sewing machine and I do it as I go. I've got a nice stack of my big ones, stack of my small ones that I've marked up and I just do it one right after another. But for this video I'm going to show you how you could do it this way as well. What you could do here is you could line these up and work to really make sure that your lines are right on top of each other. You could pin across here, pin across that center, and pin across the bottom. And that would help you if you are doing this method for the first time and you really want to make sure it's perfect. But once you get the hang of it, you can arrange it as you go. What we're going to do next is normally what we're going to do is we sew with our edge of our fabric right along the edge of the presser foot. But whenever we're sewing triangles from squares, what we're gonna do is treat that line as though that is the edge of your fabric. So you're gonna line up the edge of your presser foot even with the edge of that line, and you're gonna treat that like the, it's the edge of your fabric. We're gonna sew all the way down one side and then back up the other. Now, whenever I'm sewing triangles from squares, I always wanna sew a scant quarter inch seam. That's just a little skinnier than a regular quarter inch seam. So I've got everything set up to sew that regular quarter inch seam, 
Then I'm just going to move my needle one needle position to the right to make it just a little bit teenier. It gives us a little bit extra wiggle room when we're trimming down later so everything is the size it should be. All right, I'm gonna move this off and I'm just gonna start with these together. All right, so I'm just gonna get started sewing and when I'm about halfway or so, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna grab my piece that I already have marked over here and I'm gonna start by lining up my corners at the bottom and then what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that those lines are nice and in line as well. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of hold that in place with my finger and keep on going until I get all the way to the bottom. Now, when you get down here, I kind of hold things with my fingertip here. You want to move your finger just to the side. That way you can maintain that nice scant quarter inch seam all the way down to the end of your block. If you find that your flying geese are consistently too small, there's a really good chance that you're not doing that quite right and that it, you might not have a consistent seam all the way through. Now, if I were doing this uh, to make the entire quilt, what I would do is I would chain stitch. So I would grab another big piece and another small piece. I would lift up my press foot, stick it under, and keep on going. But we're just doing one for the video today. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that around. No need to cut your threads. And I'm just going to sew straight down the other side of that line. It might be a little hard to tell on camera because this thread is really light, but if you measure the distance between your thread, it should be just a little bit less than half an inch, but more than three eighths of an inch. And that will give you your scant quarter inch seam as long as it's somewhere in between that. If it's more than half an inch, you definitely are not gonna have anything come together correctly because your fine geese are going to be too small. If it's less than three eighths of an inch, then your seam allowance is gonna be too skinny. And then you're gonna have issues with wear over time. That seam could pop open over as you use it, or even just when you put it on the long arm to get it quilted and it gets stretched. So you wanna make sure that you're in that sweet spot. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut straight down the line that I drew right in the middle of those seams. It doesn't matter if you're right on top of that line. You just don't want to be too skinny to one side or the other because, again, you don't want those seams to pop open as you're using it. All right, so now we're going to press these, and I like to press my seams open. It really gives you a lot of versatility when you come to quilt it because you can quilt right into those points, and you're not limited at all uh, by having a bulky seam that might break your needle. Do be careful when you get to this part though, you got quite a bit going on there. So you wanna make sure you're lifting and pressing to get that nice and flat. And then once I've got it good on one side, I'm gonna flip it over and go from the other side as well. I'm gonna go ahead and do my other one. And again, if I were doing this for the whole quilt, I would chain piece and I would do all of this at once for all the stars in my quilt. All right, so now we have two things that kind of look like hearts and you might be thinking, Stephanie, how does this turn into flying geese? Well, you're about to see. So when I put my third square on and I've got my line going straight down, I'm gonna sew straight down both sides of that line. And as long as you've done everything correctly, your needle should be coming straight through where these little valleys are when you're going in and out. And you can see that when we cut this open, we're gonna have a flying geese on one side and a flying geese on the other side. Really should be flying goose, but you know, we say geese, it is what it is. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew these. Again, there really isn't a, a lot of reason to stack them all up like this ahead of time. What I typically do is I've got a stack of these ready to go and a stack of these ready to go and I just kind of grab and go and it works really efficiently that way for me. We're still sewing with the scant quarter inch seam here, so just go ahead and get that presser foot lined up with the line and start sewing down. Down. Then for this next part to chain stitch, all you're gonna do is lift up your presser foot and slide your next part in. So like the top part of the heart is gonna fit right in with that bottom corner and it will just go straight through. This kind of gets a little crazy when you get a long string of them, but it totally is doable. Now when you reach the end, what you're gonna do is you're just going to pull everything around, no need to clip those threads, and we're gonna sew down the other side. When you're going in between, what I like to do is always lift it up and arrange that again so I can maintain that quarter inch stitch, the scant quarter inch stitch, all the way down. We're gonna go ahead and cut straight down these lines as well. And you can see that we now have one line geese. Here's our second, and we'll have three and four as soon as I cut these as well. I'm gonna press these seams open as well.
We've got one last very important step before we can call these done, and that's trimming these to size. Now, each one is gonna be trimmed to a little bit different size depending on what size star you're working with, so make sure you refer to your pattern instructions for that. This one is going to be need to cut down to two by three and a half. So the first thing I wanna do is kinda of get my two inch mark lined up with the bottom of my triangle, and then about halfway between that is going to be one and three quarters. So I'm trying to get that mark right at the tip of my triangle. Sometimes it doesn't always work out, but if you can get it as close as you can, that's great. The other thing I'm looking for is to make sure I'm gonna cut my right and my top side first. So I wanna make sure that my two inch at the edge of the ruler is hitting right where this these seams are going together because we always want those seams when there's a point to be going straight to the edge. That's what keeps everything nice and pointy when you sew your final block together. All right, so everything is looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a trim. Well, you can see we didn't take too much off of that. I'm gonna go ahead and push that to the side for now. I'm gonna give this a 180 degree flip so the edges we cut are now on our left and bottom side. Now I'm gonna line it up again, and this time, instead of making sure that we have a little bit of fabric hanging off the edges, I'm lining it up with a three and a half inch exactly on the edge and the two inch exactly on the bottom. Also, the 45 degree line of your square ruler should be going straight down the seam where the big triangle is joining the little triangle. Once I'm satisfied with all that, I'm gonna go ahead give it a trim. Now, some of you guys may have picked up that the fabric was kind of moving forward a little bit on me and made it a little bit harder to cut this so that way it's going straight into the corner. That's because I need to change this rotary cutter blade. It is very dull. We use this to cut orders at the shop and it is just way too dull to do this. So if you find that your fabric is moving a lot on you as you're doing this detail work, probably time for a new blade. So make sure to switch that out. Now you can see we didn't cut too much off of this. There's just a few scraggly little scraps there. But when I lay that against another one, you can see a noticeable difference. It's smaller, it's nice and square, and it's, there's gonna be a lot less bulk and it's gonna be a lot easier to get really great results when we put this into our final block if you take this step. So I know it can be a little tedious, especially when you have a lot of flying geese, but it's so, so worth it. All right, so it's time to sew our blocks together. We're gonna to sew them into horizontal rows and then join those to complete the center. Then we're gonna start going on our log cabin. I'm just gonna go ahead and start by sewing the right row to the center row for all of them. Since these are relatively small and we have just trimmed everything to the exact size, I typically don't pin when I'm doing this. You do wanna make sure that you put your sewing machine back to a regular quarter inch stitch though at this point. All right, now when I'm sewing these together, what I wanna do is I'm gonna align my points up. So right here, there forms like a little V, and we wanna sew just one needle width to the right of where that V is, and as long as we do that, and we stay to the right of where that seam is, where that little triangle is, then we will make sure that we don't lose any of our points when we're sewing them together. So I just like to go nice and slow as I'm approaching that point, so I can make sure I'm sewing just to the seam side of it. And I'll sew down the end, and then we'll get this last little bit. So I'm not gonna press anything until I'm actually done sewing all the rows together, but I do like to lay everything back out where it belongs just so I can make sure that I've got everything in the right spot. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew the other side on to the rows. All right, we're gonna press these seams open as well. You gotta take extra care when you get to those points. But this will make them lie so flat and you won't have any bulk. So when you go to quilt, you really can do some really fun things with these. Hit that from the other side. And you can see we've got some really great joins there. You can see the points, we haven't cut anything off and it looks fantastic. All 
right, now we're ready to pin these together. I'm gonna go ahead and pin the top and the bottom at the same time so that I can whip through one side and through the other. If you're chain piecing, this will go super fast. When you're pinning with flat seams, you're gonna go ahead and flip those guys right sides together. And then I just look at it from the top to line it up to make sure those seams are right on top of each other. And then I pin right in the right side of that seam allowance. And I wanna be within that quarter inch seam. If I'm pinning way down here or any other place other than that, when you're sewing along, you're not going to be pinned right where you need to be for your joint to keep that nice and tidy. So you wanna be right in that corner of that seam. Then when we're sewing along, we're gonna stop with our needle down on the first half of that seam allowance and only then pull that pin. When we keep that needle down, it kinda of acts like a pin and keeps that join as nice as it can be until you can keep sewing. Go ahead and join the bottom as well. All right, so I'm kind of slowing down as I'm coming to that seam allowance. I'm gonna stop with that needle down just like we talked about and only then pull that pin. Now I like to make sure that my edges are aligned here and that I'm gonna go a little slow until I get to that point. Again, making sure I'm sewing just to the side of where that triangle is so I don't lose anything. And we'll sew forward, stop with that needle down. I like to line up these corners and then sew down. All right, now I'm gonna flip it around and do the other side. But again, if you're chain piecing, you can just whip straight through, do all one side, flip it and do the other. All right, so we're gonna press these seams open as well. You gotta be really careful that you're doing a lot of lifting and pressing because we have a ton of seams here and we don't wanna press anything going in the wrong direction. Go ahead and spend some extra time once you have the iron over the entire seam just to help get it super, super flat. We're gonna go ahead and hit the other one and then we'll go from the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and give those seams that I just did a good press. And then we're gonna do one final thing to get this block as flat as it possibly can be. I have an aerosol spray mister. I'd like to use this instead of water in my iron. Every iron I've ever put water in has eventually spit and got nasty. And so I've never put iron, water in my Oliso and it has stayed nice for years. I've had this for, I think four years now, going on five, and it is still going really, really strong. So that way I can go over it, get the effects of steam without it getting stretched out of place. And it turns the water into a fine mist so you don't get those water droplets that you sometimes get with a regular sprayer. And man, does that look good. We got all of our points looking fantastic and it is just fabulous. All right, so now we're gonna start doing our log cabin strips. So when I cut my fat quarters, I didn't do it in the most efficient way from a fabric cutting standpoint. What I tried to do was create a fade, so that way we would have the darkest fat quarter surrounding my white star, and then they would get lighter and lighter as we progressively went out. So when you look at your pattern instructions, you're gonna be able to see the way to do it efficiently which is where you're gonna use your fabric to its fullest potential and have the least amount left over. You are going to need significantly more fat quarters if you're trying to do the fade because you are not going to be able to use sections of the strips and you'll have to save those to use in another project. So two options, one to have the aesthetically pleasing fade and one to cut as economically as possible. You pick which one you prefer. All right, so from here on out is a really easy log cabin. We're not gonna be going all the way around. We're we're just going to be doing the sides so that way the stars are always going to be in the corners of our block. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this right sides together and if you want you can pin at this point I'm pretty confident in the way I'm at so I'm going to just go ahead and sew. I am going to sew with this one with the stars up again so I can be just to the side of where those corners are so I can make sure I don't lose the points on the outside either. Whenever you do a log cap and block, you're gonna to have to press after every single seam. Again, I like to press these open. Whenever you're pressing to the underneath one side, you're gonna lose a little fabric to that fold. And that can really add up when you're doing a log cabin block and you can really lose a whole lot. I also am gonna spray every single seam to get it as flat as I can in between, again, so I don't lose any of that length and to get a wonky log cabin block. All right, so now we're going to join our right strip to our block and we're just gonna keep going in that manner. So in the bottom and the right, the bottom and the right, bottom and the right until we are all done with our final right strip.
So this is it. We have our final block. It is looking fantastic. We've got that nice fade going again on. Again, you don't have to do that. You're going to want to add on extra fabric if you're doing one of the larger sizes. We'll give you an estimation in the pattern so that way you have an idea of how much you're actually going to need. Offhand, I haven't written it yet, but I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be at least 25% extra fabric. And then you'll have some extra strips that you can use in another project. Or if you want to do a coordinating throw pillow or something, you'll have some fun with that. But again, you absolutely can just do it the economical way, use less fabric and have some fun with it. But I really love how this is fading and how it's going to look in the entire quilt when it fades. So that will look super, super cute. All right, so the other ones are gonna to go together the exact same way, just you're gonna have a smaller star and then you're gonna have a larger star. If you wanna do this in a very efficient way, doing it one block at a time is not it. What I would do is I would get all your stars together at the same time because it's the same process, just different size pieces. Just make sure you're keeping the pieces together uh, according to each star size so you don't mix that up. Otherwise your flying geese are not gonna turn out the way they are supposed to. And then I would do it uh, one set of blocks at a time for according to the size star. That is going to be the most efficient way for you to do it at home and get this baby together and quilted so you can enjoy it. Thanks again for following along with today's video. Again, this pattern is called Star Sign. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you are interested in joining the Stash and with Stephanie Club, again, you get a free pattern every month. You get access to a, a lot of the free patterns that we've done as part of this club. You get a discount on my book, uh, Fat Quarter Workshop, which is an Amazon bestseller, which is super exciting. And by the time this video comes out, we should have them back in stock. The first printing sold out in less than two months. It's absolutely insane. I never thought that that would happen in my entire life. Um, and then also uh, you get special discounts on buying additional fabric. So if you wanna get a little bit more so you can do the finishing kit to go with this, you absolutely can. Also, you get those 10 fat quarters. So super fun club to be in. You get first dibs on this fabric. Uh, in this case, we're not sure that we're going to have that much left for kits this month because, again, our Session with Stephanie subscribers grabbed it first. All right. Thanks so much for following along. And until next week, happy quilting.